Hey guys, and welcome back to the Nerf Snook featuring Biscuit. Okay, just, it's okay, just relax, just relax. <laughs> wait, wait. Biscuit, wait. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Look, it's okay. So Biscuit was not really feeling the camera today. But so as you guys can see from the title of this video, I am going to be talking about how I maintain my busy schedule and still am able to maintain keeping a dog alive. If you guys are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Alexis Nicole and I am a pediatric ER night shift nurse. So yes, I'm a full-time ER night shift nurse and I also maintain a YouTube channel on the side. So needless to say, I have a very busy schedule. So I have a little bit of experience of what it's like maintaining or having a dog and still being able to sustain my lifestyle. So I've had my dog Biscuit for about almost a year and a half now. I He's a rescue. I rescued him from a shelter and did a baby. She's just so cute. Um, but I've had him for a little while now. And so we have gotten, or we've had a lot of time to kind of get into routine and we are very much in sync now. It took a little while, but I have a very, very solid routine with Biscuit and that's able to allow me to live my life, but also take care of him appropriately. So one of my biggest tips that I have for you guys is to maintain a schedule. So I leave for work at about six-ish p.m. And so before that, I like to kind of prep Biscuit for my 13 or so hours that I'll be gone. And so right now we have a very solid routine. So he already knows as soon as he puts, he sees me putting on the scrubs, he's like, all right, mom's leaving. So I very, very recently started leaving Biscuit out of his cage. But prior to that, when I didn't trust him as much, I have a little bed in his cage. And another thing, I have a pretty decent sized cage for him. So he has enough space to like get up turn around and get to go to the other side if you please so it's not like he's very cramped but what i would do is first i would let him pee and poop we would go in the cage he has a little tiny bed in the cage i put his water bowl and his um, food bowl in there i do put very little water especially when he was younger because i don't want him to pee in the cage but i also don't want him to die of thirst so i do put a little bit of water in him from there um, in there and i also put his food bowl because he's a trickle eater and so he'll eat a little bit at a time and so i don't want him to have to like you know only get two bites of food i'm like all right get in the cage my camera decided to die right in the middle of this so i forgot where i left off but i think i was talking about biscuit trickle eating so i put his water bowl and food in there and i give him a few snacks or treats so that's something for him to look forward to and what i've been doing now um, now that I'm leaving him out of the cage, just something to keep him occupied and just something to look forward to. I don't want him to see me getting ready to go for work and, you know, start doing those puppy dog faces. It's more of like, oh, mom's getting ready for work. I know I'm going to get a snack soon or I'm going to get a treat. I sound like I'm talking about a kid, but obviously I don't have any kids yet. And so Biscuit is like my kid. So excuse the way I'm talking. Oh, now you want to be on camera. Um, I sound crazy when I talk about him, but whatever, leave me alone. That's my little buddy. So what I've been doing is I will get um, some of the snacks that comes in his bark box. I keep calling them snacks or treats. I will get some of the treats that come in his um, bark box and I'll try to like cut them up as small as I can and I will literally like sprinkle them around the house. <laughs> I will take little pieces and I'll kind of like hide them around the house just so it's like a little hunting game for him because of the history of dogs and where they come from they are natural hunters and so i feel like it just makes it more fun for him and something to do while i'm gone it'll occupy i don't know how long it takes him to find all the treats i hide but it's just something to kind of keep him occupied so another tip i will give you guys if you don't live in a house or if you have a apartment with a balcony i highly 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 recommend getting and training your dog to pee on a little grass pad so I got um, two fake grass pads from Amazon. They're like $25 a piece. Life saver. It is such a hassle sometimes, especially if you live in an apartment, to go all the way downstairs, walk your deck, dog, come back up, and have to do that like three to four times a day. It takes a lot of time, and especially if you're somebody that has a busy schedule, it's hard to do that on all the time. A lot of times you start feeling overwhelmed. It's like, oh, I have to hurry up and get home because I have to walk him again. And so I try to walk Biscuit every single day, but 
Every time he needs to pee, I kind of just open the balcony door and he goes on the pad. He'll poop on there as well. And so it took him a little while to get used to the pad, but now he will literally like pee on command. I'll open the door and say like, pee pee. And he will literally pee like then in there. And it has been a huge lifesaver not having to go down and take him out all the time. Another tip I have for you guys is on your days off or when you're not so busy is to try to exercise your dog as much as you can. And so I try to take Biscuit to the dog parks on my days off just because I know he's lacking some exercise on the days that I'm busy or working. And so I have a problem with feeling guilty and so I try to make up for it by you know giving him like extra exercise on the days that I am working. Biscuit, you see he needs to pee now. That's his way of letting me know. And so that way your dog is still getting exercise. They're not just laying around being lazy, you know, every single day. They're still getting some kind of like excitement and playtime and a little bit of freedom. Also, even days that you are busy, just something like a five or 10 minute walk can make a huge difference. Just getting your dog out of the house, it makes them less antsy and less riled up. So every time that I come home after my long shifts, I always, always walk him in the morning. I'll either like let him run around in the dog park or just do some, a little walk, something to just get out all that energy. He's probably been building up being stuck in the house all night long. And the last tip I'm gonna share with you guys, if, if possible, I know people that do this is they find a little doggy daycare. I found places that charge like between 20 and 35-ish, I think, dollars a day for a um, like a doggy daycare. If you're feeling like guilty about leaving your dog at home all day or not comfortable with him being home all day, they have a lot of like doggy daycare options. I personally don't do it because there are no doggy night care days. It's like, it's just boarding at night and it kind of gets expensive. And especially if I were to do that every single day. Um, that might be something I would consider if I had to do something like work like four, five, six, twelve, thirteen 12, 13 hour shifts in a row where he would, I know he would get like no exercise and be stuck in the house all day. I might try to like squeeze in like one doggy daycare if that was like possible for me. But if that's an option for you, that's something that you could definitely look into. I hope you guys learned a little something from this video, if it was helpful at all. If you guys have any tips to share down below, definitely leave your comments. Let me know how you guys take care of your dogs on y'all's busy schedules if you're a nurse how you maintain working such long shifts and having an animal at home thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video